stand just a moment? Let me pray over you. I want to pray because it's almost lunchtime, and I don't want you to be like that uh, guy in the video that you start having a, a breakdown and you want to eat your shoe. Amen? Because I'm going to be honest with you. I got a message for you today. And I want to just tell you something. I'm not just don't have a message for the church. I, I really I have a mandate from the Lord. I have a mandate from the Lord. Um, well, well, so you understand a mandate from the Lord. It'll make some happy and some mad. But I'm going to tell you something. If you, if, if you are tired of not seeing change and you want to see change, what I'm about to release to you, I believe, is revelation from the Lord. So I'm going to pray who needs to hear it will hear it. All right? And then I'm going to pray everybody else, it's not for you today. You just don't be mad when we're done. No, seriously. Because, again, I hope you understand. My purpose is not offending. My, my purpose is I just... I'm at the point in my life where I just, I just don't want to just have endless services. If the church can't, if we, the ecclesia of the church, if we can't be an agent of change and get a mind shift, a paradigm shift as to what we're about, I don't want to just keep doing that. I, wa I want to be an agent of change. How about you? So I'm going to pray for us right now, and I'm going to pray for me that I'll just leave the shenanigans behind because I went really long in the first service, and I apologize. So, Lord... I just pray you'd speak through me and to us all. Lord, I just yield myself to you and your kingdom's purposes to be accomplished today. Now, Lord, let each heart hear exactly what they need to hear in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. You can be seated. Uh, I was so excited. I got a text um, actually after the first service from Johnny Taylor from Flowing Oil Ministries. He said, I was on your stream this morning. He goes, dude, that was an on-fire word. I said, I really appreciate that. That's really kind of you to say. I said, we've been, we've been marked... Um, by your ministry and by what happened through you. I really do appreciate the investment in our lives. He said, oh, Mutual, you've impacted our lives. I said, if we, if we text these sweet texts anymore, we're going to want to hug and kiss, so we're going to have to stop. So <laughs> it was very kind of him, though. Uh, he was actually on our stream this morning for the first service, and he said, man, that's the... So I felt really excited. My point is, I felt really excited that he said, I was on the stream, and I felt like what you preached, that that, that is the word for the church. So I want to just say to you, Confirmed in the mouth of many, I believe what I'm about to release to use the word for the church for this evening. So, if you weren't here Thursday night, let me just give you a quick recap. Um, Johnny Taylor and Jerry Pierce run a ministry called Flowing Oil Ministries. Um, uh, let, let me just quickly ask, how many were able to make it out Thursday night? Would you just raise your hand? Oh, great. So, uh, most everybody was able to be here. Let me just recap if you don't know what happened uh, about two years, two or three years ago, these, these men and, and about six other people had been praying for God to use them and for something to happen that was significantly different through them in their community and world. Uh, as they began to pray that uh, in a very small environment, about six or eight people, um, without elongating the story, um, oil, uh, a, a liquid substance started on Psalm 39 and began to seep all the way through Jerry's Bible. Uh, and he noticed that the oil was, if he put it in a Ziploc bag, it started gathering at the bottom of the bag. And so he, he just, he recognized that the oil was, the, the Bible was producing oil. And so at last week, it produced 13 gallons of oil in three days. Now, Kelly and I had the opportunity to, to sit down with them as they made it into town Wednesday night. They were a little late, so we weren't able to make it back to the prayer meeting, but we were able to sit and share a meal with them and I mean, just, just good, just good, kind, I'm sorry, good, kind, sweet folks. Um, and when we got done, uh, you know, Jerry takes this little container and he sticks it on the table and he says to Kelly, he said, um, what do you think that is? And we're like, you know, it's, it's, it, you know, it's a little silver clear container and it's, it's got rocks, crystal rocks in it. And we're like, we don't know. He goes, he goes, we sent it off. He said, it started appearing in the oil about a month ago. We didn't know what it was. So we just started collecting it. And we sent it off to have it tested, and it came back, it's pure silver. Sent it to a lab, it's pure silver. So, you know, I mean, I mean and I, I don't mean to, I try my best now to be on my best behavior and not offend my family, but my wife and I, our, our personalities are different. So, so let me tell you my personality. My personality is this. I was the kid, when the ice cream truck came through the neighborhood, I just ran after the ice cream truck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, I left everything in the yard behind and took off after the ice cream truck. Matter of fact, I got on the ice cream truck and, and, and hid in the ice cream truck with unbeknownst any concern about it might be dangerous. 
My wife would have been the one that she says, I want some ice cream, but I'm going to stand here and discern whether that's the real ice cream truck or not. So that's kind of our person. Our personalities are, are very, are very different. I mean, I, I tend to just, woohoo, let's go this way. And, you know, I've told you for years, yeah, I'm the kite and she's the anchor holding the kite to the ground so it doesn't fly off. I mean, and I'm not saying I'm spiritual and she's not, that's not the point. I'm saying is she's, she's very prophetic and practical in, in the application. So I think her thing was, you know, that's cool, but, you know, wow. He says, well, would you like to come see the Bible? We're like, sure. So we walk out to the van, and he opens the, Bible, the, the, the door, and they pull out all their suitcases and pull this container with the Bible out. You know, it's, it's bubbling, and we look, while we're looking, a little sliver slides out of the Bible, and he reaches in, and it's another piece of silver. He says, yeah, he goes, the Bible's just started producing silver on top of oil. And um, we were just... I mean, literally, I walked away, and I, you know, my wife can testify for herself. I don't want to speak for her. We just simply said, Lord, um, we don't want another dog and pony show. Right? I mean, so you understand, this is not about a magic show. This is not about more craziness of can we have 14-hour services and have people laying all over the church. And, and Jerry and Johnny would be the first to tell you that the purpose is the oil ought to be transformational because they believe that the reason God sent it, that, that the revelation of what it is, is it's, it's the release of the name of God, and it's the empowerment of people to take the oil and, and, and to let God use them where they go in their sphere of influence to release the presence of God. They, they do not feel like that it's something that you ought to get people to come to, and it'd be a gap. Uh, you, know, it, it, you know, we in the church, you know what we like to do? We like to get things other than the Holy Spirit and gather around it. This, this little fad, and this little fad, and this little fad, let's gather around it and build a camp around it. Look, I'm telling you something. Those guys' sincere heart is, that's not what this is about. What this is about is that is the presence of God being released, and what it ought to be is what it was intended. I mean, these guys, I mean, I'm telling you, pure hearts of gold wanting the gospel to go forward. I mean, I love them. I mean, I just felt an instant connection with their heart and desire to, to see the kingdom of God advance in the earth. Let's not make a show, not, let's not have a, you know, let's not have more. So look, this is not more, they're not trying to have revival. What they're wanting is for people to fulfill their purpose. So I want to tell you this morning as I get ready to release this word that, that I, and, and don't, I'm not asking you to suppose where I'm going. I just want you to listen to what I believe the message is and, and, and hear what I believe the Lord is saying to us. Because the bottom line is, I think a lot of us have a bunch of boundaries and barriers that we've built that the Lord can't get through. Yes, right. And so what's happened is we've got a, we've got a messed up, divided you know, world, and, we're, and we as Christians spend our whole time complaining about government, complaining about education, complaining about this and complaining about that. And I'm just telling you that, that that's not where it ought to be. We, everywhere we show up, there ought to be transformation. So I intend to show you that this morning. So let me give you a quick recap if you weren't here picture-wise, in pictures. So, Laura, if you can work with me back there, thank you. Here was the, here was the crowd from the back. This is part of his illustrated sermon. Um, as you know, one of our, go, go back if you would just a second, I'm sorry. Uh, one of our compressors went out. I wore that hoodie. I was sweating bullets up here, I want to tell you. That was the worst decision I've ever made. Somebody said, why don't you just take the hoodie off? I couldn't because the only thing I had under it was one of those squeezing T-shirts that makes your fat look smooth. Sorry. So basically, if I'd taken that hoodie off, I know, I apologize. My wife's just like, if you see my wife duck her head and start draw, writing, she's like, there he goes again. God bless him. So what I'm saying to you is it, just, it was so hot in here. Thank God it was just, it wasn't the air didn't work at the compressor. They went and juiced it and it got running again. But it was packed in here, wall to wall people. Keep going if you would. Uh, and he was preaching. There's the oil container in the, in, in the boy, I'm telling you what. Did you not? Were you not sitting so close to people that you could you 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 knew what they wanted for Christmas? You know, it's like, wow. Keep going if you would. Now, now this was um, during the worship. He started taking the the Bible out of the oil. It had been sitting there for hours and hours and hours. It holds in these containers. And what I did find out is they've been through ten of these containers. They, they fill it fills up so much it just wears through the container. Keep going if you would. This is a picture, Kelly, and this is a picture you took, sweetheart. Um, that there's, there's no lighting effect on this. 
So she took it out and, and started snapping. This is an overhead with the, 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 it's okay, Laura, you can keep going. You're doing good. Uh, this Bible down in the oil. Look at that. So it's been in the oil for three years, two and a half, three years. Um, and the, the pages and the writing and the um, highlighting is not affected. Now, let me pause here just a second and tell you a quick story. And again, I'm just, I thought it was great revelation. My daughter, Cassidy, uh, is married to TJ. She, she's a librarian um, in the um, county library system for kids and develops all that. She's, I mean, she's smart. I mean, everybody's smart, but, you know, there's some people there, you know, they know more than you. <laughs> she knows way more than me, so. Um, I thought her observation was because she and her mom probably share a little bit of the same um, personality traits of, you know, I just want to make sure I'm following the right direction of the Lord. Um, I, thought her, I thought her thought on this was really good. She, you know, I asked her, I said, well, what do you think? She said, and I, I love this about people that are processing. Because, you know, some people that process are negative. Have you ever noticed that? That they just see the bad. And that support it, they were not that. Her process was this, and she's very positive. She said that all, and maybe she didn't say that. It might have been mom or, you know, hey, y'all, whatever it was. I'm not trying to mistell the story. She said, here's what I do know. She said, I sat and watched a book sit in liquid, and that's not the way books respond to liquid, being a person that works with books. She said, look, she said, look, take all the other stuff away. That in itself is supernatural, that it sat in liquid that long, and, the, and that book is not affected. So what I'm saying to you is I believe in every way that God is using people from all different walks to say, man, this is a sign and wonder. God is doing something powerfully. Uh, is there another picture, uh, Laura? So here's the heart in the back of his Bible. Isn't that powerful? It's in the back of the, um, the Bible. Uh, Any more? Is that the last one? Oh, okay, there you go, back there. So that was what happened um, Thursday night. And obviously, we you know prayed for people, and um, it was a might you know prayed for everybody in here. And old, old Jerry took the Bible out and went. Uh, it was really great. He took the Bible out, and went in the um, overflow rooms, and he was gone about half an hour. And you know we we're praying. You know the worst thing I did is I stood up and I said we're going to pray for every single person. And I thought well some of y'all would leave. <laughs> then we got to the end of the service, and we I'm like we're going to be here praying for every single person. <laughs> I'm like oh Lord. It's like baptism night revisited, right? We're going to be here at 3 o'clock in the morning. So I said, why don't we funnel people through, you know? Oh, Jerry went in the room, and he came back in about 15 minutes. We said, Jerry, where have you been? He goes, I was praying for all the overflow rooms. I said, well, do you need help? He goes, no, I'm done. I've prayed for everybody. I'm like, there's as many people in the overflow rooms as they are spread out. I said, you prayed for one? He goes, no, I've prayed for everybody outside the auditorium. I said, you've only been gone 30 minutes? He goes, they're all on the ground. Now, here's what I saw. I'm, I'm, through it all, I'm, just, I'm, I'm setting something to tell you a story so you understand. I'm not just wasting your time. Here's what Kelly and I saw sitting down front here. When he, and babe, just if you don't mind confirming, because I do exaggerate. I understand. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. I appreciate that. It is a gift. Listen, I just feel like you need to enjoy the story, right? <laughs> Truth be danged. <laughs> no, no, that's not true. So, so he took the Bible out of the oil, and he had a big old towel here. And he set the, book, the Bible on the towel, and he spent several minutes wringing the oil out of the, out of the Bible on the towel. Did y'all saw that? You saw that? Okay. So when he took it out of the, when he took it out of the uh, towel to go pray for people, I mean, obviously, you know, you, a book that's been in liquids for years, he couldn't get everything, but it basically was dry on the outside when he left the auditorium. When he came back in, he was holding the Bible like this. Now, now you understand that the container of oil stayed with us right here. Y'all saw it, right? The, the oil sat right here in the container on the front of the auditorium. It never left the auditorium. He took the Bible and he went in that room over there and prayed. He went out in the floor, he went in the parking lot and prayed for people. Came walking back in, literally less than half an hour. I couldn't believe it. He, and you know what's funny is he's like, I'm not praying. These are y'all's people. I'm done with mine. He sat down. Did y'all see him? He did, right? He sat, you saw him? 
So he went in there, and when he came back in, I couldn't see him because he was holding his Bible like this. And he was walking back in. There's three people, you know, Manny and some of the guys had gone with him to help him were walking back in behind him. And I looked, and this is what I saw because all I could see was like what you're looking at me. This is what I saw. Steve's going to clean that up later. <laughs> it's water. Sorry, Steve. I apologize. You know what I thought? I thought what he had was what I just had. I thought he was spilling his water bottle. And when I looked, all he had was his Bible. He, it was pouring out of his Bible like that as he walked back in. Saw it with my own eyes. He walked right through that door and right down here. It poured from the door all the way to the front of the stage until he put it back in. He said, well, well Kevin, why are you, I mean, look, why, why are you, everybody look up here, because I, I don't want you to get lost this morning. I don't want you to get lost in a Bible that produces oil. That's not my point. My point is what's being released. For, for you, for you, for you, I, I want you to listen. For every single person here this morning that God's called you, I want you to realize what's being released for you. You see, that, that oil that's coming out is a demonstration of, the, of, of something that God has intended for you and for me to operate in that we're not operating in. You see, here's the old, here's the old covenant. I need, you to, I need you to listen. You know, I preach messages here, and I know some of you go to sleep about halfway through and you catch the end of it. I got this. This is not a sermon. It is just a message from the Lord. I'm telling you, you need to listen. Not that you're not, but I'm trying to really key this in this morning for just if stay awake. If I have to make you extra cold to stay awake, just stay awake. You see, in the old covenant, and when I say old covenant, the mindset before the blood of Jesus was shed, here's what people operated in. And unfortunately, unfortunately, about 99.9% .9 of us still operate this way. We don't think we do. We think, oh, we found it. Nobody else has. But I'm, I'm just going to let you off the hook. About everybody in this room operates this way, myself included. We have the mindset that I'm, I have been made clean, but as I interact with the unclean, I risk the potential of being made unclean because as clean, I touch the unclean. I have to be careful what I touch. I need to be careful who I associate with. And, and look, I'm not saying you should just live wildly, but I'm saying that mindset of the clean has to be really, really careful and really, really try really hard because if the clean touches the unclean, the unclean will make the clean unclean. The reality is this. The blood of Jesus was spilled to transform this thought that the clean touching the unclean doesn't make the clean unclean. The cl I've had coffee. Am I right? Okay. The clean touching the unclean makes the unclean clean. No, no, no. That didn't get all the way back. Let me, let me say it one more time. I got it. Listen, this has got to be transformational in our hearts. Here's where we are. This is where we operate. Whether you, I mean, I need to protest the store selling liquor on Sunday. Let them sell liquor on Sunday. Well, I need to stand out here and protest. You see, that's the mentality of, I'm clean, and if I somehow let the unclean get near me, it's going to make me unclean as the clean. You see, you discount the power of the blood of Jesus. What the blood of Jesus was shed for is it takes the clean and wants to interject the clean into an environment that's unclean, and by simply walking amongst the unclean and putting the sole of his feet somewhere, the, the clean is now transforming the unclean. Thank you. You see, that's why, that's why God said to the prophet, everywhere the sole of your foot touches, that place I give to you. You know why? Because that's what the power of God is supposed to do. It's supposed to empower the person that has given his life to God to touch the unclean things of their society, family, world, educational, governmental system, not through protest, but through power and see it transformed. I told you this is revelation this morning, right? It's not just a, it's not a sermon. There has got, listen, I'm telling you, we have got to get, and so here's what it's made us live like. 
that mentality, that mentality of I'm clean and I'm living in this unclean place. And man, I gotta, I gotta, man, I gotta go up to church. I gotta go to church ten times. And you know, you know some of you are like I gotta go to church every week, but you sleep through the service. I love you. Appreciate your body being here, but I mean, but I, I went. See, that mentality is you're not coming for life transformation. You're coming to check something off. When indeed, I love that you come because God knows I don't want to preach to an empty crowd. I appreciate that you're here. But more than my, my desire to have somebody to preach to, I want you and I to be transforming into what we've been called to be and be the agents of change wherever God sends us. You see, that's what the blood of Jesus paid for. The blood of Jesus paid for transformational power. Look at what you've been called. You've been called light. You've been called salt. You've been called leaven. And you've been called water. Look, look, look up here. So in the mentality of Old Covenant, here's what the Old Covenant mentality says. I walk into a dark room and I'm scared. Can I be practical with you this morning? Because I know some of us are just, we're spiritual. We're more spiritual than any good. Religious, I mean, not spiritual. Right? If you walk into a dark room and you don't want to be concerned or scared, what do you need to do? Reach over and flip the switch. And what happens when you flip the switch if the electrician has done his job? And what happens to the darkness? It's dispelled. You understand that is a beautiful mentality of what the blood of Jesus and the power of God is supposed to do in us. As the light, we walk into a dark place. We don't need to stray away from dark places. We just need to walk into dark places and flip the switch on. You don't need to yell, and you don't need to protest, and you don't need to pitch a fit, and you don't need to scream, and you don't need to tell people they're going to hell. What you need to do is walk in and just flip the switch, and it'll dispel the darkness. You know, I thought, you know what I thought was, a, and, and again, I don't want you to judge this for, for anything other than just the heart of the matter. Kent was telling me a, a story. He said, you know, he said, I was talking to Johnny uh, Taylor, um, and he, it, it made me cry. He said, um, he, said, you know, he said, you know how I like to say shocking things? I said, yes, I do know how you like to say shocking things. He said, uh, so I thought I'd see if I could shock him. And he, and he, said, he said, I said, Johnny, I'm, I'm really worried and concerned about something with, with everything. He goes, what, Kent? He goes, I'm really concerned that one day I'm going to discover that everybody's saved. They just don't know it yet they're saved. And you know what Johnny's response was? He said, God, I hope so. You know what the religious person would have done at that point? Let me debate to you all passages of Scripture that say that's not true. Now, look, I, I'm not trying to argue the, print, the, the theological part of it. What I'm saying is, look, why wouldn't our heart be? You, everybody get what I'm saying? Why would our heart not be, God, I hope everybody finds the Lord? Amen. Instead of, let me tell you who's not going to make it. These people acting like this, and these people acting like this, and these people touching this, and these people doing this, and these people not coming and doing this, and these people not coming and do this. God, why can't our heart be, man, I hope they find God? Amen. I hope that, I mean, you know, some of us are like, we're going, but man, there's some people over here. God, I hope I ain't in heaven with them. I mean, why can't our heart be transformed? God, I, I hope that's true. I hope it's true that, that the power of God changes this world and not a single person misses eternity. You see, that old mindset of I'm clean and if I walk anywhere unclean, then, then it's affecting me. I'm telling you, you have been robbed of your identity. You have been robbed of your power. You've been robbed of your purpose. You've been robbed of your destiny. I'm telling you, that culture stuff is not here to dim you. You're here to change it. And you're not here, come on, y'all can do better than that. You're not here to change it in the power of you. You're here to change it in the power of the one that's on you and in you and working through you. I believe it. I'm telling you. I believe that it's, it's a place. You see, here's what we have become. That mentality of we're clean. 
and we walk amongst the unclean, it might make us unclean instead of the, the new of I'm clean and everywhere I step, I, through the power of Jesus, am transforming territory everywhere I go. That mindset, you know what it's made the church? It's made the church a freezer. And you know what we're doing? We're trying to get as many fish as we caught in the freezer so they don't go bad until Jesus comes back and gets the freezer. And we measure success by, man, we got them in the freezer. Right? We got them in the, <laughs> man, we had a catch. I'm going to tell you what, fish ain't good in the freezer. You know what fish are good on? They good frying on my pan. Fish don't fry in the kitchen. <laughs> Felt that was some anointing on that. I don't know why. You see, that's that old mentality of we're going to get people in. We're going to freeze them, and we're going to wait till Jesus. Guess what? And look, I'm not trying to offend you, but what if Jesus doesn't come in your lifetime? You know what? It doesn't matter to me. You know why I wouldn't change the way I'm living? If he comes next week or a thousand years from now, it's irrelevant. Me serving him and loving him and living for him has zero to do with when he's coming. I know that living without him has no hope and no future and no promise to it. That living for him is the only thing on this earth that makes any sense. So I'm not living for him in the hopes that I can be preserved in him in here so he can come and get me and rescue me. I am living for him because I know that the other side doesn't work. Not it's not good. Because all of us know sin's good for a season. I know some of you don't want to say amen to that, but it's true, right? If sin wasn't good, everybody wouldn't be doing it. Right? But you know what all of us do know? Is it doesn't, it have, there's, no, there's no benefit to it. It's death somewhere along the line. It lures you in and then it holds you. See, that mentality is let's get people in and let's hold them in the freezer. And Jesus, look, you know what? You say, well, Pastor, you're discouraging me. You know, Jesus, he's not coming back soon. That ought not matter how you live. You ought not be holding on to the end in hopes that he's going to come get you. You know what you, you know what the difference, you know, here's the reason people are disconcerted with church. It's that mentality. You know what you, you and I need to be saying? It's God, what do I need to be doing to be about your kingdom's business whatever time I have on this earth now? Look up here, look up here, look, look everybody. Look, it's not, it's not get people in. It is transform government, transform education. Transform health care, transform legal things, transform the grocery store, transform every... You see, God's not trying to get people in the cooler. He's trying to transform the planet. You say, Pastor, I need a scripture for that. What did Jesus say? I didn't just come that you might have life, but that you might have life more abundantly. You see, how about we change to this mentality Whatever time I've got on the earth, I need to stop being about me. And I need to be about, God, where can I go and be trained? Look, we, we have spent time trying to get people saved, and then you can come serve at the church and work at the church. You know what I think this ought to be? You come, get empowered by the Holy Ghost, and let's see transformation at the engineering office. Let's see transformation in the construction business. As you're cleaning, you're working pools and, and owning your business and, and building things and working at your office. Come on, come on, somebody, right? When you're horse training and, and programming computers and, and running the, the, the city government and, and, and running God's favorite business, Chick-fil-A. Amen, right? <laughs> Driving a, a bus, school bus. You see, my point is simply this. We have thought that the, the highlight is we get you, and then we get you wor working amongst all the saved people because we don't want you to go bad. Thank you. It is a word. I, I, I'm agreeing with you, sister. It is, it is the word. There's got to, we've got to get that off of us. The purpose is this. We're going to get you lit with the power of God. We're going to get you lit with supernatural spiritual intelligence. And we're going to transform the marketplaces together. Yeah. And I know what some of you are going, oh, 
pastor, you're just preaching some motivational messages. That's just somewhere down there. How about if I told you I saw it with my own eyes Friday? Would you like to hear a testimony? So, there was a prophetic word. Can I have five more minutes? Actually, in reality, I started the five more minutes thing in the first service and went 40 more. So, I'm just telling you, that's a possibility. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. How many will give me five more minutes? Raise your hand. Keep it up. Five, ten, fifteen. I'm good to go. Babe, I'm good to go as long as... If you need to leave, just give me a nod, and I'll have a prayer so you can slip out. <laughs> we, got do- we got dogs to take care of, by the way. They- they- they're on a schedule. What's that? I love you. Keep on over there. That's good. So Friday, I told you we flew up. Chuck, Chuck Pierce released a word about the transformation that was going to happen in our nation. You know, the Bible says that God wouldn't do something unless he first releases it to prophetic people. We believe that he's a prophetic voice in the earth. I mean, I don't mean just somebody that prophesies. He is a Isaiah Jeremiah prophet for the earth. Years of integrity and 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 um, so he he was saying this, and and we were all in the service, and it it was just at his place, and and he stopped and he said, uh, "The Lord is sending uh, transformation to the earth, and to the United States of America, and it's going to start with Alabama. And Alabama will be a prototype." of what God's doing, the Alabama has to go first, and then the nation will follow. And that wasn't a relational thing with anybody. It was a prophetic thing because it was a southern door that had something to do prophetically with, with what the Lord does in, on the on southern gates. He said, so it will come, the glory will come through the southern gate, and it will become a prototype. And so when he released that word, this guy gets up, and he, and he, you know, and he breaks, and says, turn and pray. You know, I mean, if you've ever been to Chuck's place, it's just kind of a wild experience. Some of you have, you know, you know. So this guy gets up while they're, you know, so here's how they do it. Somebody preaches, and if they say something really good and, and it hits with people, people get up and come give the offering while they're preaching. I mean, it's, it's, it's a wild experience because it's like if you don't get nothing, we don't expect you to give anything. I don't trust you enough to do that yet. So, so. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> No, 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 no. I don't trust me enough to do that yet. So, yeah, I'd preach all day and y'all would leave. I'm like, wait, we didn't take the offering. I'm very sorry. Pray for me, baby. I'm sorry. I've had eight hours of sleep in four days. So, um, so this guy walks up with this big old white binder. It's about this huge. He walks up and he goes, Chuck, I'm from the state of Arizona, and we have done everything you said. We've gone to every county and preached the gospel. We believe that we're a door to open the glory of God to this land. I saw Chuck say this, Alabama has to go first. I can't take that from you. You need to go back and sit down. And when he did it, the guy did this. What I'm saying to you is it would have been very easy to say, that is really amazing. Let's hold that up and show what God's done. Chuck said, look, this this is not, it's not about what got accomplished. God's got an order of what he's trying to do. And so as soon as he said that, Kent, look, you know, we were standing there uh, a few years ago when that happened. He said, man, that's powerful. And so he began to feel like, well, what can I do in my state? And so the Lord spoke to him. I want you to go to all 67 counties in Alabama, and I want you to release the fire, and I'll send the wind. Prophetic word through Chuck to him. You, you release the fire, I'll release the wind. Kent said, I don't even know. What, what am I supposed to do? So he started, he started in a week, started contacting people in calling in, he was all over internet, calling people, do you know anybody in this county, this, I mean, all 67 counties in the state, he got a representative in one week to come to his church for a service from every county in the state of Alabama for them to say, God, we believe we're a prototype of something that you're wanting to do as a gateway to open restoration for our nation, and we want to simply yield to what you want to do and do it. Even, look, even if it's stupid, just as an act of obedience, we want to do it. You know, sometimes that's all God's looking for, Right? He's just looking for a step out of the boat. And Kent said, I don't even know if this works, but here's what he he said we feel like. We're going to call the government officials in the county and pray for them, and then we're going to hold a service that night somewhere. If it's outside and there's 10 people, we don't care. It's just releasing it into the atmosphere. It's not about a service of gathering people. It's about doing something in the county to release the atmosphere. So he got set up for us to meet with this. You need to listen. This is powerful. The probate judge over the entire county Friday at lunchtime. So we got there. We went in. 
we waited our turn, you know, and we went in. He's just, this is the guy. He's deciding people's fates. He's the probate judge for the entire county. I mean, his word is law. And he's telling us, he's like, um, so here's how this works in, in this county. He said, because I've had longevity of service, basically nobody can run against me for the next decade, so I don't have to worry about rerunning. In essence, I can do whatever I want for the rest of my life, and nobody's going to oppose me. I have, and we're sitting there listening to him. He goes, look, I appreciate you wanting to come pray for me. I just need to tell you, I'm not charismatic. He goes, I, I do have faith in God, but this, all this, I'm not, I, I'm just down the line conservative, just, I, I don't, and he, he, he stopped short basically of saying, I think you spirit-filled people are crazy. He, you know, he wasn't, he was very respectful about, but you, you know how sometimes when you're listening to somebody talk, you kind of read in between the lines? He basically was saying, I'm not in all that shenanigans. What he didn't realize, he's about to have his world shook. <laughs> so we're sitting there, and um, Kent says, well, you know, it's just me and him and one other pastor, in the, the, and I've just gone to help him. And the two pastors, one pastor from that county and Kent is from a different county that feels like he's carrying this mandate. He sits there, and um, he says, well, Judge, if you don't mind, he said, I'd like to pray for you. He said, but they sent me your picture uh, last week, and I started praying over you. And he goes, he goes, I felt like the Lord just gave me something I'm supposed to tell you. And, you know, he was very careful to word it. Once the guy told us he didn't believe in, you know, stuff, he, he, Kent was really smart. He said, I just felt like as I was praying, the Lord directed me. He goes, I felt like the Lord, and you understand, he's sitting there. Everybody look up here, don't miss this. He's sitting there. He's a judge. His robe's hanging behind. He's got his hands very judgely. Seriously. And Kent says, I felt like when I was praying for you, the Lord said, you know, he said it in the right words, but he said, I felt like as I was praying, here's what I got. You do justly, but you love mercy. And you walk humbly, and God is proud. I looked with my own eyes, and this judge begins to sob. Big old tears coming down his eyes. That's all he said. He said, when I was praying for you, I just heard, you do justly, but you love mercy. The judge turns around, God is my witness. He turns around and gets a file off the back of his desk. And he said, you know what, this, this file came across my desk this morning. This is a woman that for 10 years it has been chronic addiction in her life, like hundreds of arrests, hundreds and she's got two children, and basically the legal precedent is for me to take her kids away from her for the rest of her life. He says, that's what the law says I'm supposed to do. And today I'm going to rule on her case. And the correct ruling in the law in this county is this, that I judge against you ever getting your children back without prejudice. That's the legal precedent. Here's what that means if you don't follow the law. That basically with those legal words, that wording, Here's what that means. You will never get your children back and there's no appeal. Those that know legal, right? You know legal terms? There's a lawyer in the first service. I got it wrong. He goes, flip it the other way. In other words, without prejudice, you can't even come back and question my ruling. She, he said, as I was opening the file this morning, I felt something tell me that what I needed to do was say to her that I released this ruling with prejudice. And in those words, what he said to that woman was this. If you can go clean yourself up, you can come back and disagree with my ruling, and it will be listened to, and you will get your children back. He's pouring tears. He said, the legal thing is this, but the merciful thing is what I felt like I'm supposed to do. He said, I've got cases like that where that's exactly what I'm doing. He goes, I don't know where you heard that. He goes, but it is nice to know that God is happy with what I'm doing. So, oh, wait, 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 it gets better. That's only the half. Oh, right, can I have five more minutes? This, what's that? Denny, that's right. Denny's is open 24-7, y'all. It never closes. It's, it's cool. Thank you. I feel released. So 
they say to him, do you mind if we gather and pray for you? The judge says, I mean, now he's like, yes, please pray for me. So they get up and they're standing. And I've got, I have a picture on my phone. Unfortunately, I should, have, I should have given it to Laura to put on the screen. But these men are standing there praying for this, you know, the judge. And he's got his arms around them while they're praying. And you know, now they're praying in, the, hence praying in the spirit over him. I'm standing over in the corner praying in the spirit as I'm, I'm videotaping it. We're just releasing the, you know, the power of God in the room. And all of a sudden, here's what the judge does. While they're praying, they've got their arms around each other. And while he, he takes his arm off of Kent... And he starts, he pulls his sleeve up. Look at, so he pulls his sleeve up and he starts tapping his watch. You know, I'm standing there filming this. I'm like, it's kind of rude to check your iPhone while you're being prayed for, right? You know, and, and it's not like just, hey, stop. It was like, and I don't have an iPhone, you know, I watch, but isn't that what you do? You know, it's like, isn't that what you do, TJ? And it's like, is that, is that it? So, so, so several, you know, he's like, I'm thinking, he stopped praying, you know, all together. They're still just praying away. So, and they close the prayer, we shake hands, we hug each other, and we walk out of the room. And, you know, I'm thinking, that was really, I mean, he, he said yes to be prayed for him. Why didn't he just stay connected to us while we prayed for him? But thank God he let us pray for him, right? We walk out, and we were supposed to just go get in our cars and go to Denny's to have a cup of coffee because <laughs> it was the only thing open <laughs> really seriously <laughs> I will take gift certificates Denny's if you're watching this thing. so we're standing on the court step the steps of the courthouse and Kent's being Kent we walk out and there's a guy standing there selling crosses and he gets in a conversation buying crosses from this guy you know we're all standing there going can we just please go? And he's like, how much? You know, it comes to find out the guy's selling the crosses to support a rehab center of, because he says, we have found that faith in God is the only thing that will rescue people out of their addiction. Kent's like, let me give you all your crosses. I'll buy them. And so they're standing there buying. And I knew when he started negotiating, he looked at me. I'm like, he's about to get my money. You know, you know? <laughs> That's another story. Anyways, so I can't go there right now. Um, so we buy the cross. So he stands there and negotiates. And it's about five minutes of talking. All of a sudden, in that five minutes, I look, and I'm, you understand, they're standing on, with their backs to the door, standing on the steps of the courthouse, and I'm standing there just, I'm thinking it's cool, I'm taking some pictures for him and everything else, because you know, I feel like I'm just supposed to go help you. And I'm standing there, and all of a sudden I look, and come down the stairs is the probate judge. He's running. He bursts the doors off. He goes, thank God you're still here. He goes, I've got to tell you something. And now he's not just crying, he is full sob. I have it. I have it on, on video. So so when you know, I know normally I exaggerate stories, but I'll show you next week. Okay. He is sobbing now, and he's shaking his head. And I, now I'm trying to get my video going so I can video it. And I look at him, and here and here's what he says to Kent. He goes, "I don't know if you realize when you were praying for me that I took my hand off of your back." Kent said, "Well, I, I did notice that." He said, "I didn't know if you just were uncomfortable." And so I was trying to. He goes, "No, no, no, no." He goes, "When I took my hand off, he goes, my." My phone that's connected to my watch was going nuts. And I felt like I was distracting you, so I was trying to get it to stop. And it was three phone calls and text messages attached to the phone calls that were three people. They, they called when I didn't answer. They texted me. And I was trying to get my phone to stop, my watch to stop. So when you left, I called them back. And here's what happened. You prayed three specific areas in our county to change. And as you prayed, the sheriff called. And the sheriff told me that an area in our community that was the thing you were praying that we have been trying to change for 10 years just got approved to change right there on the spot. Wow. Then, then the mayor called. And the second thing you, God is my witness. Ken will tell you, the second, the second person was the mayor. And the second thing you went to and started praying was an area the mayor and I have been trying to get changed. And while you were praying, the mayor called me and texted me and says, you've got to call me now. That legislation changed. The third call was from the governor of Alabama. There's something that your county applied for that we've not been able to do. Just now, somebody's walked into my office and told me that we have got the funds to fund that, and we're going to release that to you. And it was the third thing Kent prayed for. 
that judge, that judge was lit. He's like, I don't know what, you, but please pray for me. Whatever you, here's what he went from. I, I am conservative and I don't believe in what you got. To, I don't know what you got, but I need a dose. I'm telling you, come on somebody. That's what he said. He went from, I'm not interested to light me up. You see, you know what that's called? That's called spiritual intelligence. It's called transformation. It's called light and salt and leaven and water. And it's what you're called to do. You see, we've got to stop buying into, I was made clean, but if I touch the unclean, I'm going to get unclean. we got to realize the power of Holy Spirit on the inside of us. We've got to realize the power of the blood of Jesus to be transformational agents in the world. We get in the car, and we're sitting at Denny's, having our cup of coffee, and Kent says to, to the pastor and to me that we're in the room, he says, and we recount what's happened, he goes, I got to tell you what's going on in Silicon Valley right now. He goes, this whole thing, we're working with this guy, which we're going to go, we're going to take a bus of people from this church to be a part of it in November if anybody wants to go. This guy's coming from California that is leading this movement of transformation in our world transforming our world through the power of spiritual intelligence in the world. Basically, you know what he's saying? Is we need the gifts of the Holy Spirit operating in the marketplace. But you know what? That has gotten so marred by the world that, that they won't listen anymore. So what they've changed the wording so that people would, would, would say, I need that, but without the baggage. So Kent said, I got a call from this guy. Can I have five more minutes? I know some of you are like, I got to go. But you got to listen. I'm almost done. I promise you. The guy from Silicon Valley called and, and was telling the story. He's, it's not Apple, but it's one of the big Silicon Valley dot deal businesses worth billions of dollars. The CEO was about to make a decision of a, a deal that he was going to make, and it was a, a huge investment of the, of the corporation's finances and resources. And another friend said to him, hey, I got this guy that he, he prays for people, and when he prays for them, it's like real directional. Why don't you let him pray for you before you make that decision? The guy's like, I don't believe in God. He goes, well, I understand, but there, what's to lose? Just let him pray for you. So he says, okay, well, just bring him in. So the guy calls his prophetic friend who is dressed in shorts, a polo shirt, and flip-flops. He goes, hey, my buddy that's president of this corporation has agreed that he wants you to come pray for him. And the guy said, that's telling the story, he said, he said, you realize that I am standing outside. I, didn't, I hadn't gone to the courthouse you know, or to this business to meet with him. I just had driven him down, and I'm eating a hot dog out of the, uh, from a vendor. And I put mustard on it. I took a bite, and the mustard went all down my polo shirt. So he said, so here I am. I'm wearing a polo with mustard shorts and flip-flops. And my buddy calls and says, the president that's worth billions of dollars wants you to come pray for him. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. So he said, I walked up into his office. I've got mustard drying down my shirt. And here they are, dressed, bill, hunt millions of dollars of office stuff, thousands of dollars worth of nice clothes. He walked in and said, Lord, if you are in the business of humbling people, that's exactly what you've done. But he walked in, he said, as soon as I walked in, he said, I, I didn't do, the, he said, I just walked in and said, I, I feel like I, as I'm praying for you, that you ought to look at this deal. And he began to describe that the, it was a word of knowledge, basically, but he said he didn't use it in Christianese terms. He just said, I, you need to look at that deal because it looks good on the surface, but it's going to lose $100 million in three weeks. The guy said, look, we've had a, we've had a forensic accountant, three of them, go through the books of this company. That you're, you're, you've lost your mind. He goes, you need to call and check this. You're going to lose $100 million if you pull the, within just a short period of time if you pull the trigger on the deal. Walked out. He calls the company and says, would you reveal this, this, and this? When the company released the statement, he saw the loophole that they had put in their books that three a, a forensic accountants missed. And sure enough, had he pulled the trigger, well, hang on a second, had he pulled the trigger, his company would have lost $100 million instantly. You know what the, listen, listen, so you know what the guy, the CEO guy did? He called his buddy back and said, who is the dude that had the mustard on his shirt? So he said, well, actually, you know, he's in our network of people we're training. He's got spiritual intelligence. 
He said he's operating. He said, you know, CIA, <laughs> intelligence agent. He said he's got spirit. Come on, does anybody here want some spiritual intelligence? Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I said, would anybody here like to operate on some spiritual intelligence? Yeah. So guess, guess what the CEO, that, and guess what? That CEO that had that happen to him is coming to the conference in November that we want to take you to, and he's going to share his testimony personally. So you know what the CEO did? He said, I don't know about this God thing, but I need that guy on my staff. They hired three intercessors. The CEO in Silicon Valley, he, now look, I'm calling them intercessors because we're insiders here today, right? He, did, he said, I don't know what they are, but I want three of those spiritual intelligence agents. <laughs> they hired three spiritual, and they, he said, we want to hire you. He goes, look, what, what do you want to hire me to do? He goes, I don't know what you do, but I want you to just sit in my office and pray. Pray over who I meet with. Pray over my schedule. Pray over what we're going to invest in. He goes, I don't know who you are, but I know that you just saved our company $100 million, and I want you on my staff. He goes, he goes well, I mean, I'm doing this, this, and this. He goes, I'll pay you $75,000 just to sit and pray. He goes, okay, I can do it. <laughs> the dude got $75,000 to pray half a day. He says, not only do I need one of you, we got so many deals in the hoppers, do you have two friends? He, come on, somebody. He hired three intercessors that can get a hold of heaven and bring it down not look not to be on the staff of a church to be on the staff of a dot-com business in silicon valley that's selling you computer parts you know why because he realized the power of transformation when we get a hold of the spirit of god what i'm saying to you this morning is that's available to you it's not available to you because you've done good. It's not available to you because you think you've worshipped enough or come to church enough. It's available to you because the blood of Jesus makes it available to you. It's available to you because God paid for you to have it. It's available to you because God wants to transform the world. You see, we've got to get a paradigm shift. You're not here on this earth just to say, man, I'm here to have a good time. And where can I live and what can I do? That's what eternity's for. I don't, can I have five more minutes? It's not funny anymore, is it? I know. It's not funny, is it, Eric? Doug, it's, it's like that joke's stale now. I told you I'm not 25,000 funny. I'm about 500 funny today. You see, we've got to get transformation in our hearts about this, this whole thought of what we're, what we're doing and why we're here. You see, you know, I think some of us think eternity, everybody look up here, please listen to me, because this will transform your thinking. Some of us have been raised in religion so much that we think eternity is going to be miserable. I'm going to get to heaven, and it's going to be like going to church every day. And you like, I mean, you like me, and you show up and all, and, but, but truth be told, you want to go watch the football game. We want to go play golf. I mean, seriously, right? Some of you want to shop. Some of you want to take a nap. Right? I mean, so the thought of eternity of endless church service, you're like, I'm not sure I want to go to heaven. <laughs> no, no, I mean, can I be honest with you? If eternity were an endless church service, I might want to sign up for something else myself. Now, I want, you understand, I want spirituality, but I think spirituality is sometimes sitting around a table having some fellowship. Not just sitting and listening to me preach, or, you know, anybody preach for like, non-stop eternity so well pastor kevin what's eternity eternity according to the scriptures which defined is actually a reward so tj you know what it's going to be when you serve the lord it's going to be a endless surfing adventure where you get on a wave and there's no stopping you never have to paddle out you say oh pastor you're just being silly no i'm not that's really what it is that's really what it what Yes, and, no, and, there's no, and there's no danger of an accident. Well, we might have an accident, but we really don't care. You're not even going to have an accident. No, 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 no. If you, if you tip to the side, the Holy Spirit just adjusts it right back up. That's right. You see, that, that's exactly what it is. 
You see, we've got to change the mentality of what we're thinking is, I need to have fun here and do as much as I can to enjoy myself. And then when I get to eternity, man, I've, I've gotten in. I've been in the cooler. I got inside the building and in the club. And now that I'm in the club, I get to go into the eternity place and I worship. You know what Jesus said? Be about my Father's business. Be about my kingdom's business. Be about the kingdom's business now. And then when you get to eternity, woo, you going to have fun. You say, Pastor, you're making that unspiritual. No, I'm not. Jesus is going to do it with you. He is going to have fun with you. You know why? Because Jesus, have you not read the scriptures? Jesus loves a party. Jesus loves a celebration. You know what? The, the Pharisees kept saying, you're, you're at every party. You're not spiritual at all. Jesus says, I'm about my father's business. You see, now the mentality shifts from I got to be selfish now because if I'm not selfish now, I'm going to die and not experience life and I'm going to go to heaven and be in an endless church service. What I'm saying to you now is the hundred or so years you might be on the earth, you need to be about the kingdom's purposes and business now on the earth so that when you get to eternity, you're going to experience life everlasting. You say, Pastor, why are you saying that? Because I'm saying to you, God has, you see, we read the scripture, God gives me the desires of my heart, and what we think is, well, Lord's going to give me what I want. That's not what that scripture says. It actually says is God's actually going to give you the things in your heart that you desire. God is going to put in your heart. So anybody here enjoy fishing? I don't mean you like to go. I mean like you love to fish. Anybody here? So how about this? Eternity, you've served the kingdom's purposes, and you get to eternity, and the Holy Spirit's going to put you on a bottomless lake that you can see all the way to the bottom, that you don't even have to put any bait on it. You just hold it out, and the fish jump on. <laughs> Come on now, that's right. And you're drawing them back, and while you're drawing them, you don't get, you don't get sunburned, you don't get anything. You see what I'm saying? The mentality's got to shift. We Look, you're on the earth today. Your only purpose on the earth today is to be a transformational agent of the Holy Spirit everywhere you go. It's been paid for. You're not clean so that you can be afraid of the unclean, that you might, it might make you unclean. You're clean, and God has mandated us, you and me. He's mandated us that we would touch the unclean and make it clean. Can I give you two scriptures and let you go home? I'm sorry, but I am pumped up. I am, I, and look, I'm not pumped up the hoping that you think I did a good job. I, I feel like I have tapped into something. I feel like I, I have known this, but I haven't been able to put it in the right language. I feel like I've, I kind of have had a glimpse of it, but not been able to understand it. I am telling you, I think you and I can change our community. I think we can transform our state. I really, for the first time, I don't believe it's just a pep rally that we talk about. I believe it can happen. I saw government change in front of my own eyes Friday. I saw it. I saw it with my own eyes. And I believe if we believe the word of the prophet, if we believe that God reveals first to the prophetic and then he releases it to the church, I'm not talking about every Tom, Dick, and Harry prophet. I'm talking about a real prophetic voice. I believe if we'll listen to a prophetic voice, I believe that God has got a man tape. So if God is setting a prototype and opening a gate, then we need to watch what's going on there, support it, and pray for it, because if it's prototyping and going there, it's coming here. Listen, wouldn't it be cool not to complain about our government anymore, but just see it changed? Teachers here this morning, wouldn't it be great not to have to worry about complaining about our education system and just be transformed? Come on, somebody. How about the law business? Anybody like that to be transformed? How about health care? My point is this. I believe God wants not just people in the cooler. He wants people in the cooler to transform the world. So Jesus had this conversation, two scriptures. Three scriptures, I lied. But I'll go fast. Matthew 16, Jesus has this conversation. I just want, I got to give you a scripture, not just a pep rally. Jesus gave this scriptural reference um, to a conversation he had with Peter about who people thought that he was. Remember this? He said, Matthew 16, I think we started about verse 13. Is that correct? Verse 13. Okay, there it is. <laughs> Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked, Who do men say that the son of, who they say that I, the son of man, am? 
Some say you're John the Baptist, Elijah, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets, verse 15. And he said them, but who do you say that? I mean, you know, this is famous. Peter, who sticks his foot in his mouth, says, uh, you are, this is so powerful. Is everybody here still engaged a little bit? If you're still listening, would you just wave at me just a little bit? If you're sleeping, would you wave at me just a little bit? Thank you. I appreciate your honesty. I love it. I ain't listening to you. I'm just thinking about lunch. Here we go. Yeah, I know you're teasing. Maybe. <laughs> Peter answered, and this is famous, right? You are the, you know what's funny is we don't realize what he just said here. He says, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. You know why I know it's cool is because it got, it got Jesus fired up. Jesus was like, here's what Jesus said. Jesus said, I know you don't know what you just said because <laughs> you're, you're a mess. You said he didn't say that. He did say that to him. Look at what he said. Next verse. He said, blessed are you for flesh and, in other words, you see, we read this so spiritualized. Flesh and blood is, in other words, Peter, I know that you don't have enough sense to figure this out for yourself. That's really what he's, flesh, in other words, this is not earthly. It is supernatural what just got revealed to you. Flesh and blood's not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And look at what, this, these next few verses, you need to look up here. This is interactive. Verse 18, and he said, you are now Peter. You're no longer Simon. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now, you realize that where he is at this point, he's in Caesarea Philippi and behind him, there is a portal. We've been there. Those of us who have been to Israel, Kelly and I, our family, we have a picture right outside this. There's in Caesarea Philippi, there's a portal that was called the gates of hell. It's where they went to this portal to call up demon forces to influence politics and religion in the area. They would go and conjure up demons to affect the government at that gates of hell in Caesarea Philippi. So Jesus is standing right in front of this portal and he says, Peter, this revelation you've had, it's not flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I say to you today, now you're the rock, and upon this rock I'm going to build the church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then Jesus takes a deep breath and something powerful that we miss. He says, and I will give you, look up here, look up here, everybody. Look up here, you don't want to miss this. Everybody look up here, get, get on the edge of your seats because I'm about to pump you up here. And I will give you what? Keys to the kingdom. Let me ask you a quick question. Verse 18 we're told who builds the church. Who builds the church? Look at verse 18. One more time. Go back and forth. Verse 18. What does it say? I say to you, you're Peter, and on this rock, who's going to build the church? Who's the I there? Jesus. You know what we've done? We've taken to building the church. We think it's our job. That, no, that's, that's not about that. I know you're, try, you're well-meaning, but that's not, tr that's not what this is about. This, this is, we think that it's our responsibility to run enough programs to be spiritual. To get people in the cooler. That's not what this is about. Jesus said, you're focused on the wrong thing. This is not about building, you building something. This is about me releasing keys so you can unlock your family. Come on, somebody. This is revelation keys so you can unlock your family, unlock your finances, unlock your relationships, unlock everything in your life. And guess what we've done? We're trying to build something without his presence and we've lost the keys. And now we wonder why church doesn't work and why the government's messed up and why the economy's messed up and why this is messed up. You know why? Because the people with the light. And the people with the salt and the people with the spiritual intelligence have lost the keys. What I'm saying to you is Jesus wants you to have the keys. He wants you to have the keys to the car, the keys to the house. He wants you to have the keys to the money. Come on, somebody. That's got to make somebody smile this morning. Jesus wants you to have the keys to bring change. One more. Psalm 51. This talks about sacrifices. This is... The passage of Scripture says the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. So here was the word that Chuck said. If we would, if the only place that God would ever pour out the fire is on a sacrifice. Right? There's no, the fire will only, so the fire is this transformational, hang with me. I am so sorry. I know it's late. I promise I won't ever do this again to you, okay? Just please, I need to deposit this in this, in the arena today, Okay? 
I'll let you go home way early next week, okay? Thank you. I appreciate it. I, I appreciate Thank you. You're very sweet. Thank you. I appreciate it. Y'all encourage me. I'll go into the hour. No, no, no. So the only time that fire would be poured out is if they put a sacrifice on the altar. So guess what? All of this is about God releasing fire, the fire of spiritual intelligence. And I know we got, I couldn't talk to people. What if you just walked in the room and it changed? You see, we've got so much about, it's I've got to do it. I've got to say something to somebody. I've got to build something. Just wipe that away. We got to get you empowered with spiritual intelligence that just where you walk, it changes. Yes, here's the key. If you want the fire, it requires a sacrifice. Fire, that kind of fire, look up here. And now some of you are holding your breath because here's where religion goes. The next common is God wants your time. He wants your money. He wants your hobbies. And so I got up this morning. That's exactly what I started doing. I said, Lord, I'm going to leave. I'll see you all next week. I said, Lord, what do you want? And so I said to the Lord, I started, I started getting up this morning, I started praying over this scripture. This is my revelation. I said, Lord, you can have my hobby. I said, you can have my hobby, Lord. And I heard the Lord say back to me, I don't want that raggedy old bag. I said, because you knew I didn't want to give it to you. <laughs> uh, no, really, seriously, I heard the Lord say, I don't want that because I know you really don't want to give it to me. <laughs> I said, Lord, I love you so much. Thank you for letting me keep it. He goes, I don't, I don't want your hobby. I'm like, well, Lord, you must want me to eat better. So I'm, 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 I'm going to eat better. I'll, I'll give you that discipline. He goes, I don't want your diet. I said, thank God. So I stopped by Burger King and got some bacon, egg, and cheese croissants. <laughs> I gave away three in the first service. I got two left. Anybody want one? They're cold, but you can warm them up. Anybody want a bacon, egg, and cheese croissant? Thank you, Glad Brad. Thank you. Gladys. Here, go give Gladys that break and egg and croissant. They, look, they're, they're clean. I bought them for Burger King this morning. Aren't you glad God doesn't want that? He's, you know. So you know what? I said, well, Lord, you must want my time. So I took, I took my watch off, and the Lord said, that, that battery doesn't even work in that watch. Why do I want that? I said, well, Lord, you must want my, you must want my phone. He said, I don't even want your phone. I said, well, Lord, what do you want? He said, I want you. The Lord spoke it to me. I said, well, Lord, what does that mean? He said, I don't want you to, look, listen, I need you to look up here. He said, I don't want you to change anything. I don't want you to alter anything. I just want you. I said, well, Lord, do I need to spend an hour with you every day? He goes, Kevin, I just want you. I said, well, Lord, I need something practical to tell people. He goes, okay, I'll tell you in the next few weeks. So, so I don't have anything to tell you other than the Lord said to me, he just wants us. The sacrifices of God, you know what, so, so I looked at this word broken, I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it because I'm, I'm kind of scattered this morning. Okay, I did that, I did that, I did that. Okay, here we go. The word broken in this scripture actually means the ending of land and the beginning of water. That's what it means in the Hebrew, the word broken. So it says the sacrifices of God are, a, are where the boundaries, and so I asked the Lord, what does that mean? He said, isn't it interesting that what God says he wants is a broken spirit is actually where the boundaries end and we open it up to let the Lord do it. So everybody look up here a second. Here, oh man, I'm telling you, God's on this. Here's what the Lord wants. He wants you just to break the boundaries. Look, some of you have got some ideological boundaries that you're just so staunched in that you won't pause and realize God might be saying something else. Would you be willing, if you want to be an agent of transformation, to put that on the altar? The boundary. Look, some of you have got some ideological, theological things that they just need to put on the altar. They, they do. I love you. And me too. Can, can, can I... Okay, I'll say it. Should, should we listen to prophetic voices? 
Can I prove to you, can I prove to you right now with one final example, and I'll close. Really, last example. Let me tell you the epitome that, that it's an example of why this is messed up. If we truly were transformational agents and not just getting people in a building as fish to be preserved in a cold environment. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, man. I love that. It's awesome, isn't it? I'm telling you, folks, God's about to do something in our earth. If it was real change, 15 years ago, Chuck Pierce prophesied that this nation was going to have an African-American president for eight years. Don't just say anything. Just listen to me. You know what the church should have said? When his name got on the ticket, you know what the church should have done? They should have showed up in mass and voted for him. And you know what everybody that's got their ideological lane is saying right now? I'm going to send the pastor an email about how this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. What I'm saying to you is this. What you're operating in is your own kingdom where you think it's about you and about your preferences and I'm, I'm protecting something. If God was going to put him in there, you know what the church should have said? It's your purpose, God, not mine. And then eight years later when God said, I'm playing a trump card, you know what the church should have done? If God's saying it, and we need to stop. They were wrong in spending the taxes this way or there. You know why? Because here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to reform society ourselves. Does everybody get what I'm saying? And look, I'm not making a political statement. I'm not trying to influence anything. I'm not trying to do anything other than saying, here's the point I'm trying to make. Here's the point of this young man. I mean, this man just about to break my heart. It's the people of God that realize they're a transformational agent in the earth for whatever time they're on the earth. It's not about where we get to vacation or what car we get to drive or where we get to live or, or how, what kind of clothes or shoes or, or suit or whatever else we get to wear or buy. It's about God. I am here to serve the purposes of God in the earth. I'm here to serve you, God, so that when I get to eternity, I've got, a, I've got an eternity to spend enjoying you and enjoying the things that you created as you redeemed the earth. And I am here only, only to serve the kingdom's purposes. That's all I'm here to do, God. I'm not here to have a stake because, you know what? You see, you see half. The Word says that we see, we see dimly through a lens. We don't see. So guess what? God can put somebody in there we totally disagree with, but use him for something. He's done it throughout eternity. You know what you and I need to do? We need to pray, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. And God, let me be an agent of transformation, right? That's what it needs to be. Because if we'll get there, then all of a sudden you and I will start operating in spiritual intelligence. I'm telling you, you know what these are right here? These are, these are sacrifices on the altar this morning. These are people saying, God, you know what? I, I might have been in the wrong lane a little bit. Not, 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 out of, not out of rebellion, not out of a desire to be, but God, I might have been in the wrong lane just because that's the way I've been in my whole life. But God, I don't want to be there anymore. I want to serve your kingdom purposes on the earth. I'm telling you, folks, I don't want to talk about this anymore. I don't, I don't want to talk about, woohoo, we're going to change the world and not have any change. I'm telling you, I believe it's available to us. I believe the power of the Holy Spirit through you and through me is available to change government, to change health care, to change education, not for Democrats and not for Republicans. Come on, somebody. You know what I believe it needs to be changed for? It needs to be changed for the only kingdom that matters. Hey, don't don't miss something powerful that happened this week. Did you know that there's a legal thing that's going on that would put prayer back in schools? And it's, look, it's not about prayer in schools. You know what it is? It's about spiritual alignment with God's purposes. That's all it's about. The, the sacrifices of God are ones that are ready to move beyond the boundaries. They're broken. And God, look, God will not despise it. Look at what the next verse says, verse 18. I'll close, I'm done. Look, verse 18. Is, is that one there? Verse 18. Sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, 
a broken and contrite, a boundary finishing, a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. You got verse 18? 51, 18? Sorry. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, TJ, can you come here a second? 18. It says, do good in your good pleasure to Zion and build the walls of Jerusalem. You know what the Lord said? The Lord says, if you'll come here, if you'll put the sacrifices, you on the altar, look at what God will do. He will do good to you and build walls around you. Come here. I want to pray over you. You know, you know something this morning? Here's what I saw over you. When I was sitting in the back praying for y'all while you were worshiping, just the only time I opened my eyes, I was praying in the Spirit the whole time that y'all were leading worship. And when I opened my eyes, you were on the screen. You were on the screen with your hands totally lifted up. And the Lord spoke to me and said that there's a mantle with your grandfather on your father's side, that he died prematurely. But there's a mantle that was not fulfilled on that side of your family. And God wants you to know he's held that mantle. He's held it in trust for you. I don't know what it is, but it's really significant and transformational. And God wants you to know that when he died, pre- obviously not in, in the will of God, when he died prematurely, that the Lord saw, he saw your unformed body even before your grandfather died. And the Lord spoke to me and told me, he said, I've been holding that mantle in trust for TJ for about 60 years now. And he doesn't need to worry, but I'm going to release it to him in the right time. And he doesn't need to get concerned or ahead or worried about how it's going to work out or when he's going to get to this place or that place. The Lord says you just be at peace and you just keep rocking on the rails that you are and you be at peace because God's holding that mantle in trust for you. Your name's on it. It's not going to anybody else. And so I pray over you right now. I I don't even know your grandfather. I've never had any conversation with your dad about who he is or what he did, but there's a mantle that was on him that was entrusted by God. I'm not saying he was godly or whatever. I'm saying there was a mantle from heaven that was on him and God's held it in trust for you. And I, I, I just pray right now over you and release it to you right now in the name of Jesus. Would you stand right now? These at the altar, just stay where you are. God's doing a powerful work in your life. I want to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Here's what I want to ask you this morning as we close the services. Are you here and instead of immediately going to God and saying, God, I'll give, you my, I'll give you my hobby or my time or my money or food or something else, would you simply hear the Holy Spirit this morning and would you make available to Him you? And I don't even know what that means. What I'm asking you not to do is make it a religious thing. Would you just make you available? Because that's what He wants. If you would say, Kevin, I will make myself available as a sacrifice. I will put it on the altar. The Lord says if you would put it on the altar, he'll send the fire. If that's you, would you just hold your... Look, I'm not not a pep rally, really. We'll figure out what it looks like practically. But would you say to the Lord, I'll give me as a sacrifice on the altar. Would you hold your hands out? Because I'm going to pray for a release. If you're at the altar and you'll do that, would you just hold your hands out? Lord, you see all of us that have our hands available to you. Lord, we just, we want to put us as the sacrifice. Lord, we want to put us as the sacrifice. God, we're saying to you this morning, even in our limited revelation and understanding, today, God, today, God, today, God, today, Lord, we are the sacrifices on the altar. We say, here we are, Lord. We want to serve the kingdom's purposes in the earth for whatever season that we are here and for. And Lord, as we serve your kingdom, Light us up with spiritual intelligence. Come on. Release spiritual intelligence into our lives, God. Release the anointing. You know what Peter, when Peter said, I forgot all about this. When Peter said, uh, you're the Christ. You know what that was? That word Christ there is the oil. Did you know that? In Matthew 16, when, when, when Jesus said, you got it, Peter, you're right. Upon this revelation, I'll build my church and the keys of the kingdom will be released. When Peter said, you're the Christ, what got Jesus so excited is what he said. He said, you're the anointing oil. You're the oil. Isn't that powerful that we had the guys with the oil? You're the oil. Come on, Lord, I pray a release of the oil. The presence of Jesus in every life. The presence of Jesus in every life. Mark us, Lord. 
Mark us, Lord. Let's pray for him. Mark us, Lord. Fulfill the purposes of God. Fulfill the purposes of God. You're going to. You're going to. You're going to. Yes. Come on. Yes, Lord. God's about to really transform something with you in your business. That boldness to lead the way is gonna it's gonna change something in your business. It is. There's something that's happening. I don't know what you do, I don't even want you to tell me. But I'm gonna tell you the the, the, the stepping out of what you did this morning. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a transformational business in your area and arena. As you did this this morning, God has already begun to shift and change something in, in, the, in the surroundings that you're working in. Just be aware of, of, of Holy Spirit's work through you and the words that you need to say to people that work around you. Because all of a sudden, God's about to connect you all around to things that are going to lead to promotions and put you in places that you couldn't have ever got in the natural. I'm telling you, when you did that, when you stepped out and came to the altar this morning without anybody being called humbly, something broke. Not just something broke for you, something broke in the kingdom, in the atmosphere, something broke. I release that over you in the name of Jesus. I can't reach him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, Lord. We put ourselves there, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Say this prayer. We say, Father, I am the sacrifice, and I put me on the altar. Help, help me not do that religiously, but with your heart to fulfill your kingdom. And as I do, release the oil. Release spiritual intelligence and transformation in my world. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? I'm sorry for keeping you so long. I apologize. Um, uh, and you know what? Humbly, if, if, if I treaded in territory that was um, offensive to anybody, I ask you to forgive me. Hang, hang on just a second. I, I just I ask you to forgive me because you understand just in being a human, I can get on a roll. And, and I, I, my goal today is not that I draw any attention to me. But I, I want to tell you, I am just, I am, I believe for the first time in my life, I believe for the first time in my life, that the church's ability to change society is not just a pep rally call from a platform, it's real. I mean practically. I mean like, I mean not like, hey, we make a deposit and years from now something changes. I mean like we're praying for councilmen and mayors and doctors and there's instant change. I felt like the Lord said there's been a season of sowing but now is a season of reaping. So I, I want you, please, if, if I offended you, just leave and forgive me. And here, spit out the bones and just hold the chicken, okay? No, I mean, really, I mean it. Because the only thing open is Denny's, and I feel really bad. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift his countenance upon us and grant us peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.